experience the learning process. So the initial webinar, we're going to deal with some very basics. Those more experienced users are welcome to leave whenever they want, as I'll probably just be repeating things they already know and understand, and I won't be offended. So enough's enough. Let's uh, fire things up um, in the web browser and let's start learning a little bit more about setting up our websites, uh, FTP, project targets, database creation, server connections, tables, and initial pages. <coughs> Just having a quick little look at the um, chat to see if there's anything there that um, I need to address. I think, I think I'm okay for the moment to go ahead. Right, I'm going to start initially just with um, setting up your basic web configuration. This is the um, web service that I use for producing my websites. Uh, it's a shared platform, it's cloud hosted, and uh, it provides me with pretty well everything I need. I don't run a dedicated server because I found that this platform will give me everything I want. This is just a, a spare domain I had. Uh, Data Logistics is an old company name I used to use many, many years ago, and I just didn't have the heart to uh, say go goodbye to the name. So let's have a look. We've got a, a, a completely empty web hosting platform here. Um, and I'm going to take us right from there, right through to being able to set, set everything up and uh, set up your first page. I'm just going to pop into the file manager on it first. And you'll see the, the reason why is that I've, I've effectively FTP'd in. And you'll see that actually the FTP comes up one level higher than the website itself, which is all the web pages go into this public HTML folder. And that's an important concept we'll come to later, that the FTP route and the website route might not be the same. Just close that up again. Down here we have our settings. Um, usual details of primary domains, etc., IP addresses. Um, the important thing here for us at the moment is this FTP details. And you'll see that we've got uh, the FTP server name. We've got a username and obviously a password. I'm just going to uh, set that password to something because I can't remember what it was. Um, I'm just going to cover that up for the moment so you can't see that uh, what I'm doing there okay that's uh, our password set. I'm not going to use those details to be able to set up the FTP settings for the um, target etc for the uh, WAPLA project. The other thing we've got to look at is uh, we obviously need a MySQL database. On this particular console a fairly straightforward to set up database name we'll just call it um, testing WAPLA. Um, I simply need to create the database. Bit concerned there, we've got another message. Um, we'll just wait and see what happens. I'll come back to that in a moment because uh, I really don't want you to be hanging about waiting for a server error. Let's try again. Uh, That's better. Now we see that we've got our database created. Um, we have our server name that we require on this particular setup. The database and usernames are identical and it allocates us a password automatically. Again, I'm just going to uh, cover up that password just temporarily and update that to something different. That's great. Right, I'm just going to have a quick break here as the uh, 
see if there's any questions that I need to answer. There seems to be a lot of chat going on. Um, but hopefully there's no big questions for me to answer at the moment. So let's, let's carry on. So we've set now our database. We've set up our FTP connections. And now we should be able to go straight into our beloved Wappler and start setting these things up. Just waiting for Waplet to, to load. It's loading up on a different monitor at the moment, I'm afraid. So, uh, gonna take a couple of seconds. Okay, great. There we are. So, I said we're going to start right from the basics. We're going to uh, be creating a new project from the start. So we're going to go into our project section and we're going to be creating a new project. And this will be a straightforward web project and we're going to start with a blank screen. Our project name uh, we'll call just as the uh, website is and the project folder I've already created so we're going to select that but you remember we, we talked about FTP route and we talked about website route the FTP route for this server will take us one level above the I'm just getting a message there from people asking to share a larger screen um, I'm just going to have a look and see. Can I ask, is that better? Right. That's great. So, as I was saying, we've got an, F an FTP um, route and we've got a web server route. Um, I like to try and mirror that server structure with the structure that we have on the, uh, the locally. So I'm not going to use a project folder as the straightforward website route as we had here. I'm actually going to create that public HTML folder as well. So effectively we are mimicking that structure that we have on the server. Okay, let's save that. We now see that we've got uh, initial page has been created automatically. But of course, we've got to go a lot further now. Now we've got to create something which will tell us um, more about how it will interact with the server itself. So I'm going to pop into these project settings. You'll see we've got a lot more now. Not only have we got that general tab that we've just... Um, so I'm going to... Because I've enlarged that screen, I'm going to have to start dragging this screen around, I think. Um, is that better? Right, I'm getting a good little hint from somebody. I need to right click on the screen capture. Um, transform, stretch the screen. Okay, how's that? That's um, a great bit of advice, I think, that I've got just from there, from Theatre Geek. Yes, I've got to apologise. I am new to this technology and I'm, I'm still learning as we go along. Um, yeah, I'm delighted that you can help me out on that one. So, right, we've got the options now for style files, assets, folders, and very importantly, we have the server model. So... If we just open the existing folder, you'll see that Wapner has actually created our CSS folder and a style sheet for us. So I'm just going to use that default setting there. Similarly with assets folders, it's created our assets folder. So again, I'm just going to stick with that at the moment. Just for those who haven't um, been developing before, the CSS, the style 
file folder is where we can have we can define custom layouts and custom colors etc of text within the web page it's a standard technology used within web pages for uh, layout etc and the assets folder is a place where we're going to be keeping all of our images videos or whatever all of those little parts that we use to assemble a web page and then lastly we're going to use the setup which is the server model and that's going to be php in my case but that could easily be um, ESP or ESP.net. We'll just add routing in. For those who don't know what routing is, uh, we'll be doing a, a whole section on it later. But that's about um, giving your web pages a more friendly name so they're more friendly for search engine optimization and it will select the appropriate handler for you. You can set default frameworks. Uh, yeah, Web Junkie, you're asking, can you rename the Assets folder and move the CSS folder? Absolutely. Um, if you go back to there, <coughs> we can actually choose any folder we want just by simply browsing to the folder that we wanted. So we could literally put it anywhere we want there. Um, as long as it's within the, your website route, because obviously you can't address things outside your website route, you can put your assets and CSS anywhere you want. Okay, so frameworks, we can set some default frameworks. Um, we pretty much need to have the app connect and everything, um, certainly for web projects. And we, we also probably going to be using um, Bootstrap in pretty well everything. I'll just use a CDN. For those of you who don't know what CDN is, that basically means that it's linking to an online copy held on the cloud um, rather than a local copy. And then lastly, we're going to look at targets. And this is really where we go back to our original um, settings for FTP, etc. Because we're going to be using those settings to set up our initial website. So I'll just quickly remind everybody of those settings. I'm just going to drag that back on the screen. Here's our settings here. Our FTP server is ftpdatalogistics.uk. Our username is Logistics UK, and our password is lurking there, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, and we need to use those settings to be able to create our online target. So we call it Data Logistics, our web server URL. The only thing I've actually pre-set up on this uh, web server is I've set up HTTPS. Again, for those who oops, not really sure of the difference, um, HTTP, HTTPS is a secure version of the hypertext uh, transfer protocol. More and more Google now is starting to, shall we say, distrust or dislike non-secure servers. And I really would uh, encourage everybody to use HTTPS and it's certainly 100% essential within any e-commerce environment. Um, there's, n there's no need to pay big money for this now. There's uh, pl plenty of wildcard type stuff you can th put onto it and uh, it's, it's really important, I think, that people get in the habit of doing that. So popping our web server URL and we're going to then pick on um, our FTP settings. Now you notice there's four different FTP settings that uh, are shown there. Standard FTP, that is uh, the most common one used, but it is an insecure protocol. So if you're transferring anything that you think um, is particularly sensitive, then bear in mind that your information will be sent in clear text. In WAPLESS cases, I suspect it's only configuration settings that would be sent that would be a problem, because let's face it, most of this stuff's already available shown on the internet. So if you want a secure version of that, you've got um, SFTP and you've got FTPS. Now, uh, subtle differences between them, FTPS, for those who really want to know, um, uses SSL as the communication, so that's a secure socket layer, which I think now they refer to as TLS. 
where SFTP uses SSH, that secure shell, um, to be able to communicate. So they do a similar sort of thing, but obviously the protocols are slightly different. There's other little um, quirks, like for instance, uh, F FTPS uses an initial communication port of 990 just to initialize that uh, dialogue. However, all the others use the standard port 21. But that really is not that important to the vast majority of you what exactly happens in the background, just that you really need to know which um, works on your server. I'm just going to stick with a plain straightforward FTP. Keep that nice and simple. If you remember, we've got um, now the settings to put in of uh, our FTP server is FTP data logistics. The user, username is remote directory. Don't forget now we're, we're trying to look at the where our web pages are going to go. So we need that into our web route as opposed to our FTP route. Generally, you can leave the port. Um, empty and the Wapler will work that out and then last of all you've obviously got to uh, pop in the password and if I remember that correctly now we should be able to test that connection and we should be able to get a sorry my mistake one one of the quirks of my server is that you also must unlock the FTP before you can use it so I just need to quickly unlock that by IP address and then obviously typed something wrong here just notice we've got a dot in front of that username um, and that should get us beautifully online. Um, and there we are, we have our connection. So now we have our local target and we have our online target. And I'm just going to switch over now to that online target. Just going to have a quick look through the chat here. Um, few people actually noticed that dot before the username that I had there. Uh, well spotted everybody I didn't um, <laughs> but we now we've done the basics now we've got that FTP and target set up we've got our database uh, creation sorted um, we've made our server connection before we go any further I just want to now go back to the database section and let's have a look at setting up our database and our um, Okay, I think we've got a little bit of an issue there. Just one moment. That's better. Right, so if you recall, we'd set up our MySQL database earlier. We've got our shared platform. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into that and that will take me automatically into my PHP admin. I'm using this particular platform purely because it's um, language independent, it's a platform independent, it's web based. So it doesn't matter whether you're using a, a PC, a Mac, Linux or whatever, you can still use that platform. And I'm going to create a very, very simple table just to give you an example of How to create a table. I'm going to create a table with four four columns, just ironically. And if you remember, we I did that 15 minutes contact um, database tutorial. I'm just going to create some basic tables on the basis of that for you. So first of all, we're going to start with uh, the name of the table. We're going to call that contact. And then you see here, we click go, and that will create our database table. We're going to have a contact ID. That's going to be an integer value. We're going to have it as auto increment and that will immediately make it a primary key and it will 
create an index in the background. Let's have um, a first name. We're going to make that varchar. Again, for those who um, don't know much about the um, basics of database, varchar is a, is a string effectively, but it can have a variable length. So all we do is need to do is tell it what the maximum length that we'll allow for that is. And the database management system itself will ensure that no wasted space occurs. It will change the size of that at the appropriate times. So we've got to give that a maximum. Let's say we'll give that as a maximum of 60, 60 characters. We'll have a last name. Again, we'll go of our chart at 60. And then we'll have, uh, let's say, an email address. Varchar. And it's, sometimes people's email addresses can be quite long. So we'll call that 120 characters. I think we've got everything there. Um, so let's just save that. There was a lot of chat about using different um, types of database manager. Yes, you can use pretty well anyone that you can think of within WAPMLA. Say I'm using P my PHP my admin because it's it's easy to use um, in terms of it's multi-platform. However, my personal favourite is Navicat. Um, I see mention of Heidi SQL, uh, that's really good as well. Um, there's also things like MySQL Workbench, um, probably lots of Mac versions as well. I'll be honest, I'm not a Mac user, so I'm not really up on what the uh, Mac equivalents are. But basically, you can do, you can use pretty well any much, uh, any, sorry, management software that you want to be able to deal with that. So there we've got our... Um, structure built once we've got our structure built obviously we will be in a position to be able to insert records etc um, but i'm going to just pop back to wapla now because what we actually need to do is make a connection to that um, database from within wapla and then we also need to look at how we're going to uh, just add a page so we've got our frameworks already, uh, already there. No, we haven't. Sorry. We First thing we're going to do is we need to add our important frameworks. The App Connect framework is absolutely essential, really, um, because that, that links all of the different components within WAPLA to your application. I notice um, a few comments coming through there about MySQL Workbench for Mac. Um, database manager would be awesome within WAPLA. I think that's been talked about in the past, whether it'll happen or not. Um, you never know what George and his team have got up their sleeve. It's incredible the things that you suddenly appear with. So who knows, maybe in the future we will have that. Anyway, back to the important bits. Um, we've created our first page. Um, we've added our all-important components here our frameworks if you're working on a mobile app then obviously we're looking at using F framework 7 cordova etc um, but we're just going to at the moment be sticking to a fairly straightforward web app suggest so you get in the habit of doing things uh, straight away you need a, a page name um, we'll just keep this simple and we'll just call that home page. That one obviously will be the the page that uh, the page name that will appear within your browser tag. Just gonna quickly save that just in case. Um, good, just good to see you with us, Theodore. Um, hope you're enjoying a holiday, and uh, nice of you to take the time out. Okay, so meta tags, I think, was the next thing that we were going to discuss within this. Um, and this is a relatively new addition to WAPLA and a really, really useful um, term. I'm just going to jump on to Scott Star Seeker's uh, comment there about, um, sorry, Magic Bytes. Talking about bootstrap 
templates. If it's a Bootstrap 4 template, then it will probably work straight out of the box with Wappler. Um, so you, you, you should be able to use them no problem at all. What you will find though, as you get to know Wappler and uh, how incredibly quick it is, then uh, you probably won't be using templates anymore. You'll be designing from scratch. Meta tags, back on the air. We've got uh, a number of tags now that are available within Wappler and uh, say this is relatively new and a really, really handy um, facility. And I'm just going to very quickly talk you through them. There's so many references online about what these various tags are that I don't need to go through in too much detail, just to make you aware that they are here. Um, and this is how to do it. Your description is your description of your web, web page. That's the all important section that will appear under the title when you get yourself into the results on Google. So you need that to describe what's happening. And bear in mind, whenever you do these things, uh, think SEO, think about what does this page uh, t tell everybody and try and get a few of those key terms within that description. Keywords. Well, keywords are sort of a little bit discredited now. Um, people used to put fake keywords in um, in the early days, which discredited the whole sort of setup. So I don't think many search engines really take that much notice of them but pop them in anyway they're certainly not going to do any harm um canonicals a really interesting one and it's uh something that an awful lot of people uh missed out on uh, hello brazil <laughs> um canonical is to tell basically the all um that google about what is the normal reference to that domain? Some of us may have, for instance, this one, datalogistics.uk. Some of us might like www.datalogistics.uk. And Google actually sees them, as do all the other search engines, as two completely separate domains. By setting the canonical tag, we can actually tell it which is the preferred domain and it will, even if it is, for example, www. If the canonical set without the www, then it will know that they are both the same web, and it, it will pull both the stats, etc., from the likes of Google Analytics together, rather than having them split between two different terms. Icon is. Uh, we still have the old. Um, single icon set up that will work within a web browser. And we're not going to go into too much detail because that in itself could be a lesson, but uh, now there are so many different forms of icon that you can show within your web browser that um, there are, I would suggest you use the online generators that you have out there. Um, but it's the old fav fav icon, the favorite icon that uh, this refers to. Open Graph is all about how your pages appear on Facebook. Facebook and all of the other social network um, setups are now incredibly important, even for web pages. So we need to tell Facebook how to view your particular web page. And from that, we have a site name, which is the name that will appear. Image is the preferred image within your particular web page, which um, Facebook will show. So if you've got four or five images on, you can pick the one that you want to appear within um, Facebook. You can set the URL, obviously, of where the page is and the title that you want to appear in that um, entry and a short description to tell, again, for Facebook to describe what that particular page is all about. Twitter has a very, very similar setup, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but again, you can have uh, image, URL, title, and description. And then we have the tags for mobile. Now, uh, George, J George might well cringe here, but I think the way that it's set up with the mobile tags, they're very Apple-specific. Um, but if I show you the tag here... Um, just within the code view, you'll see we've got Apple Mobile Web App. If you actually duplicate that and take the Apple out, I do believe that will work fine with uh, Android as well.
and then finally search engines robots um for those of you who don't know what robots are all about it's about telling search engines where and where not to go within your website and it's primar primarily it's good for telling a search robot not to go into a particular area on your website so if you have an area that has resources that you don't want um, publicly indexed then you can t tell the robots um, here you can tell it not to index or not to follow no icon not to archive etc there's also a robots text file that you can use in place of that um, but that's probably a little bit beyond the scope of what we're doing today so i think at this point that is about everything that we i said we would be doing on this day one of uh, our webinar um we've added the frameworks i'm going to leave the linking to a database until next time i think um and i, I think that formed the, the part of the next one so really now it's a case of uh, any questions folks uh, anything that you would like me to address directly um otherwise at 35 minutes and mouth's getting dry and uh, we'll call it a day Thanks, Dan, 3636. Um, the Meta, yes, you're missing publisher and author. To be honest, um, publisher and author are great for advertising yourself, but they have really no significant effect in terms of the uh, search engines. So, yeah, by all means, uh, put them in, but uh, don't think that they're going to enhance your searchability at all because it's not going to happen that way. anything else okay then before i go um any of you want to pop over to the there just had to be a phone ring just at the end isn't there next next one is next tuesday anybody who wants to pop over to the wapla virtual academy and uh you you, you can sign up and join and uh I'll send out information from there. Uh, I, 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 I just, <laughs> just having a little giggle here. Sorry, um, rang somebody and said, for goodness sake, do not ring me for the, over the next hour. And guess what? They've just rung me. <laughs> Great that you all joined me. Um, I've really enjoyed doing this and I'm really looking forward to next Tuesday. I'm going to try and make this a regular Tuesday spot um i may well just drop in the odd special here and there probably in the evenings or weekends that'll be uk time so keep an eye on those twitch notifications um, keep an eye on any announcements that are put out and i might just drop the little surprise in so if everybody's happy um thanks very much i'm i shall call it a day